what to do if well, oh my god i already messed up whatever uh, <laughs> we're gonna keep that in gonna keep that in <laughs> yeah what to do wait how's it going players and trainers it's your boy the blazing squid it's been a long time but i'm not alone what is going on thumb thumbs this is your boy thumb brother 2 and we are here to bring you guys a very special video do you want to go ahead and explain it squid yeah, uh, Jesse beat me out of the playoff race. That's what this video is all about. <laughs> oh. And a three-time LDL champion was knocked out by a no-title holding bearer. But here we do have LDL G-Max finals between Jetman99 and Spartan, which, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, neither of these two players have a championship. In LDL. I don't believe so. I mean, I know Jesse has made it to playoffs quite a number of times. However, uh, he's never quite made it all the way. And as far as his competitor, I because I just have been taken a big, a huge step back from the competitive scene within LDL. I am not sure who it is or if they've played before. So it's cool. Anthony. Oh, is it Anthony? You know Anthony. I was yeah, just say, I, I didn't realize. I didn't realize. You said the name so freaking weird, dude. I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, Spartan, because you also used to go by Spartan. I, okay, yeah, that's right. No, in that case, no, Anthony, I don't believe, has gotten uh, a championship either. I know both of them have made playoffs quite a number of times, and Anthony has been with us for a long, long time, too. Yeah, I remember his last um, finals appearance was actually against Arthur. I remember that battle. I um, remember that battle. So, so pretty sure he's looking for blood. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But let's go ahead and just jump into this battle. I'm going to go ahead and hit play now. Go for it. So but, I actually did help Jesse build this team. So we have some pretty interesting, fun sets coming this week. I'll definitely say so. Uh, looks like uh, this is just like a full-on live Yep, 27-minute video that we are going to be recapping here, Squid. Um, are we going to want to pause at moments or just let everything play as is? I feel like let, it, let everything play as is. Cause All right. You have viewers at home. You The viewers also want to, you know, they wanted to continue. No, absolutely. So, uh, what was you? So, since you helped Jesse build this team, what was the idea going into this battle? Like, what was like the like the 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 core of this team? The core of this team was all around Edge of Slash. Edge of Slash was a weakness policy swords dance set with priority, um, enough speed to outspeed. I forgot what it was, but it was just something that could take a hit and hit back hard if need be. I mean, the fact uh, that Edge of Slash is allowed and just so many high level mods are allowed in, in a draft league is really cool to me just because you know, I come from the days of like that definitely having to be banned and stuff. So to see such prestigious uh, high level mods being able to be used like this, I think is super fun. Yeah. And you know, your standards, a defensive wall, it, it just a lot of mods that can take hits plus be able to dish something back. Cause that's always been my play style, especially when it comes to playoffs. Playoffs sometimes comes in, it comes down to longevity. Can a mon take hits and stay on on the floor before getting knocked out or just try to take out your opponent well, best way possible. Now, well, from what I remember about Jesse's team in particular, and I, 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 can't, I unfortunately can't speak about Anthony's team, but I remember Jesse's team was nothing but fat bulk. I mean, he had Toxapex. He had, uh, like you said, the Aegis Slash, which can definitely tank hits in its defensive forms. It had Clefable, the, oh, like the fattest fairy of all time. Okay, we do see now... Uh, Anthony's team on screen here, which is going to be uh, starting from the ground up. Uh, the Kiram, the uh, I don't know these names anymore. The t uh, I, I don't know its name. Shoot the electric poison type Steelix, Starmie, Toxtricity. 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 There we go, dude. It's been a minute. Tornado Sarian form in Urshifu. Is that single strike or is that uh, uh, the the fighting one, the which is. The, yeah, the single strike. The single strike. So that's the yeah. That's the water type one. No, the the dark type. The dark type. Okay, okay. And looks like Jesse had brought Clefable, Uxi, Aegislash, Landorus, uh, Toxapex, and I'm really happy to see the Incineroar. Of all the different Pokemon that shouldn't be there, Incineroar and Toxtricity are definitely the two of them. 
but still very cool to see him uh, showing up. The Landorus is, a, is another Pokemon that I remember seeing on Jesse's team. It's just like, h how broken of a team can you can you really have? But then you look over and you just see Urshifu, single strike form, dude. I mean, Urshifu is just crazy yeah. powerful. What, what do you think a lead should be here, though? A lead-wise... Uh, I would hope Jesse leads off with Edge Slash here because Edge Slash really takes on his whole team, and it wasn't a weakness policy; it was holding up Colberberry for the Orishifu. I'm wondering if that was changed around last minute. I'm gonna turn this down just a hair, just so I can continue hearing everything. But it looks like the lead is going to be that uh, ooh that Tornado Sarian, while leads the Uxie. Uxie. Very interesting. So there's potential U-turn hits coming off on that Uxie. Uh, looks like Jesse m wants to potentially trick i was th thinking that it wanted to go for stealth rocks not knowing his set uh well this is going to be very interesting to see almost kind of real time the thought process of uh, jesse going back and forth thinking on his side but uh no this is i think this is even a, a really good lead as far as antony's part just because that u-turn that quick u-turn is really nice just to get some of that damage off on uxie right now yeah so uh actually this scarf uxie is supposed to be Faster than Orishifu, was it? But it's actually faster than Tornadus. So I don't even remember the spread. That's extremely fast because cool. you and I both know okay. that Tornadus is super fast. So he has already revealed uh, the thing. I think maybe Trick would have been ideal there. Does this, thing, does this thing get knocked off? No, right? It does get knocked off, yes. I don't know if this gen has knocked off that. Ooh, that is true. So, it uh, looks like the taunt is going off. So, no t toxics, no toxic spikes, no potential hazards to be set up. Jesse has to go for the offensive. And it looks like he did go for a very safe Scald, which, you know, end of the day, is not a bad play whatsoever. Being able to burn your opponents 30% of the time is really, really nice. And uh, Anthony has to think about what has to come in or if he wants hit one of his Regenerator Mons to eat a burn. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it looks like we're going for some flinch stuff. Some air slashes coming off right now. Does not get the flinch. Skull. A burn would be huge here. It would, but does not look like he gets that burn, unfortunately. But, uh, of course, you can't expect a Toxapex without the Black Sludge. It's that Poison-type leftovers, which is really, really nice. And I love Toxapex. I I'm not going to lie. So finally showing that U-turn. But what what is he going to be sending in to uh, eat this hit now? Because we know a skull is coming. Either the toxicity, either the toxicity or the carrium, I believe. Right? Those are the only two things that would appreciate a burn, potentially, and can hit this thing super effectively. Yeah, I definitely more see that Kiram only because uh, I see Kiram just being able to, like you said, eat that hit and just. I mean. It doesn't have to send off any big hit, but uh, having Earth Power alongside of it as a main uh, move on its move set probably is going to hit a lot of things on Jesse's team very super effectively. So he sent on Selen, who is indeed that Kiram. Okay. So we'll see Getting what. that pressure off. Mm hmm. Does he get the burn? No burn! Oof. Oof. Okay, but the taunt has indeed. worn off. So now Jesse can go ahead and start doing some potential shenanigans with Toxicity if... Uh, wow, Toxapex. I'm now mixing them up in my head. Toxapex if he so wishes, but I don't know if Toxapex is uh, more so specially defensive as compared to physically defensive. It is specially defensive, but we got to be wary here. If he brings in Toxapex, either two... I mean, the, the Cairo, two things are either happening. We're either going to see a freeze dry or earth power. Um, gauging by Jesse's team, I think earth power is more convenient. Yeah, earth power oh, there comes it off. Is. Ooh, that's a big hit. And, ooh, no, the special defense drop. That is not good for Jesse. Uh... As that special defense drop is now going to force Jesse to swap out because there is no way, I think, even at minus one, this, toxic this Toxapex might live. But that is an unfortunate. Can't risk cannot risk such a high end mon. Uxie, this that's the safest play right now. Uxie, um, 
having the levitate right now yeah it definitely is and if that thing is locked in i would almost even say a better play would have been going into a super fast slanderous but looks like it's going oh, to double out into the darby interesting did so we got psychic versus psychic type that is a good call on anthony's part looks like jesse would be going for the safe u-turn just to kind of get some momentum back meanwhile that starmie's on the field and I don't know about you, but I've always loved Starmie's capabilities and huge move pool that allows it to be such a monster on the field. That U-turn does d yeah. do a lot of damage, though. Showing that Scarf being able to even outspeed Scar uh, Starmie, which is honestly saying something. I think that's base, what, 115, 117 speed? Something high-end like that. Uh, one yeah, 115. But, like, but now it kind of brings on... A Brings out the question, like, what does he do against the Starmie? Everything else on his team is Thor. Well, we're going to see a flip turn. Great bring. A uh, move I honestly forgot existed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a water type U-turn. Who would have thought? Has to be the toxicity, right? Poison type. So, mm. Oh, Steelix. The Steelix comes out. Ooh, very good. I don't know. Don't know what it is. Did he just click counter? He, he could have clicked Stealth Rocks? He clicked counter, and it looks oh, like... Oh, no. Huge misplay. Yeah, the Rocks definitely were a more obvious play, in my opinion, than going for the straight attack. Uh, Jesse definitely missed out, and he now goes for the Stealth Rocks. I feel like this now. is... That, now that Clefable is going to be taking a huge hit regardless, or potentially even given Anti really good switching uh, potential, or just being able to get huge momentum... Now that his rocks are up, and now Jesse has to either take a hit or to get his rocks up or risk having something else being put in here. Yeah, now that he's revealed his hand, he's honestly just revealed his hand here by clicking counter first rather than the safe rocks. Especially since he knows that this he has a Pabiri Berry, first of all, and... It was like it's a defensive build. It takes these hits like nothing. Mm -hmm. Very interesting to see that counter come off with the Babiri set. I mean, you saw how much damage that really did there. That was only 30 to 35% end of the day. That would have gotten a lot of damage off on that uh, Steelix, but end of the day, I don't think it would have been the best strategy to uh, have counter alongside that. I would have seen something like Flamethrower to help counteract alongside like with the Kiram. Uh, just in case there's weird switch-ins there or wanting to throw things off there or... I don't know. I feel like there's something else that could have been brought, but the Incineroar of all things is coming in, taking those 25% from rocks, gets the Intimidate off, going to eat up a Heavy Slam decently well, but I don't know if that was the right play there. We'll see how much damage this does. Okay, that does very negligible damage, which is really nice. Yeah. So... I guess he wants to get HP back here, maybe? Go for a Drain Punch? Definitely. He it... does have the the Assault Vest, so knowing he can really take any hit, except for the Urshifu. Mm -hmm. But Urshifu would take it super effective. Ooh, so but the Safe Protect scout. is scouting. Very nice set on that Steelix. Stealth Rocks, Heavy Slam, Protect. Uh, but we have not seen the Steelix taking any damage yet, so my best bet is uh, Leftovers, 100% could be confirmed here but i definitely see the the even the most minute damage to get back with the drain punch is the more safer play in regards to any other play because of course flare blitz does get uh the recoil damage earthquake while heavy hitting uh definitely not the best of some of his mods but drain punch is definitely the safest so he does do that yeah that's a good chunk of change to get back here let's see what the steelix wants to do here if it carries earthquake for its final move which it does. It does. Ooh. And down goes the Incineroar. It was a critical that, hit. That crit mattered. He was at neg one. It was neg one. That was a big unfortunate crit. And now a really good, uh, like you said, Assault Vest user and Intimidator. A really good defensive mod for Jesse is down and out. And now Jesse has to uh, refocus here. Looks like he is going for that Trick Strat with that Oxy, but showing the very fast U-turn the entire time, I feel like this play is very, very obvious. And well, it looks like 
Uh, it looks like Jesse's kind of like, um, what's it called? Tilt playing right now? He because is. Because he has, he, the, the edge of slash is a swords dance set. It's swords dance with close combat to like, to set up and then knock this Steelix out. But unfortunately it looks like he's just, he just got critically hit. He, he's like, he's very desperate. He needs a kill. He needs something. And right now being locked into Trick, I mean, he's forced to go for the Trick. I mean, once again, really good scouting with Antony, being able to protect, get more health back. But now we do see that he sees that that Trick is coming. Going straight into the Kyurem. He's going to be given the Kyurem the Choice Scarf. Let's see what this Kyurem had before. Yeah, let's find out. Choice scarf. scarf for a choice scarf. Okay, so okay. the sink was already fast, but now you're stuck into tricking, having to take the, whatever hit, you're forced to either swap out or lose your Ooksie. This is not looking good. Wait, he's able to switch? Are you actually... I th yeah, he's able to switch. He I did. his original trick. I did not see that coming. I did not know that. So this is a faster Ooksie. So this is probably... Uh, maybe the Kurim is either a modest set. Oh! Oh, no. That is what a... Oh, I don't know what percentage chance if that's a 30 or a 10%, but that is such an unfortunate freeze on the Uxie. I will look that up. Let me see how much percent... What? Jess, yeah, Jesse, I think, is definitely playing it safe, allowing his uh, Uxi to go down here or seeing if he can un unthaw because that right now that Kyurem is locked into freeze-dry. Uh, Uxi can't take 10%. one more hit. How much? It is a 10% chance. Dear freeze. Lord, this is not a kind game to Jesse. It looks like he is going to remain frozen with that Uxi, and freeze-dry is going to pick up the knockout on Uxi. Very, very unfortunate. The, those Dazzling Gleams could have really worn down uh, that Kyurem and probably would have given Jesse that extra uh, advantage. No, he does it again. Now, the edge is, he's locked into Freeze Dry. I think Swords Dancing on the edge of Slash was the play here because he has the Cobra. It's, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's just Tilt playing. If I've ever seen Tilt playing, this is a prime example, guys. Yeah, Jesse, unfortunately, is definitely... Struggle bugging as I like to say right now trying to gain some kind of momentum back scaring him out with a big big hitter Wanting to save that Aegis Lash in the back But no, I 100% agree with because you know that Celix in the, is in the back because you know Kieran is still right there It definitely yeah, I definitely agree that Aegis Lash play probably would have given him such a huge advantage to b Just take a huge chunk out of Antony's team But we do see now the soft boil does allow Jesse to Keep us clefable around a little more, but we do know that uh, that Heavy Slam is going to be doing a lot. But like I said, I don't think it's going to be enough. Maybe with the Beberi Berry gone, it will be. But this is going to be an interesting turn to see what exactly this Steelix does or if Antony has any more shenanigans up his sleeve. So he's going to go for the safe Earthquake, lower damage roll to be able to wear it down as and not take as much damage with the counter. That still does a pretty, pretty penny. Uh, I definitely see a Protect yeah. coming off, though, next turn. So I definitely would. I hope Jesse clicks Soft Boil here because that damage is not going to be. Ooh! I don't think after her. I would hope he clicks. I would hope he clicked Moonblast, honestly, here. I would hope. Expecting it. a switch out. There goes the Heavy Slam. Let's see how much damage this does. Ooh! He lives Ooh. it. But here comes the counter. He's going to get the counter. And that. That uh, does work out in Jesse's favor. Thankfully, a very, very huge uh, wall out of his way. Steelix, a godsend. You cannot, you cannot sleep on a Steelix. But now this, Just... being down uh, uh, two mons now, two very defensive mons. Uh, Jesse definitely has to really pull the trigger on some of these offensive plays here. Carefully plan it out accordingly, making sure he doesn't sack unnecessary uh, mons or unnes or mons that he does need later on. Because right now, it's going to be an uphill battle for him. Yeah, and I'm trying to see if this cow can tell us how much of Earthquake should have been doing. There's Earthquake if he's not 
attack invested should have only been doing maximum 44 percent on that incineroar earlier wow so huge huge um yeah it was huge that that crit oof and there, down goes the clefable i really feel like he could have saved that and gone out into like tox effects or something uh i really don't understand what jesse's play there was i like maybe it was a roll or something in regards to his health damage but that is a big big loss clefable is able to sometimes just sit on the field and the only real wall he has left is going to be toxapex which only has scald but that's not going to be doing enough right now but it... yeah and now that he's all and since he's uh revealed that he has taught he can't go into this edge slash i think he's really focused on edge slash being his last mod as like a late game sweeper when in reality here is the tables have turned it really Edge slash is no longer it's you need something that can dent antony's team and something that can you know also tilts him in a way to scare him and be like oh shoot look at this mod very interesting to see the taunt come off antony predi yeah. predicting that he did that he was trying to set up i'm honestly curious as to why he didn't go for the uh stone edge yes he has the potential to miss but stone edge really comes off and is able to do so much more damage because that damage while nice on the uh tornadoes honestly end of the day is just going to be regenerated off but looks like jesse is going to start fishing for that scald again because we do know what taunt's coming. We know Tornadus has taunts, so you have to go for the Scald. Yep. Don't click Toxic Spikes, Jesse. I'm telling you. He has his to Toxicity in the bag. It's not worth it. Yep, there's the and taunt. He wants a poison. The only thing good that comes out of this is the fact that Black Sludge does activate end of the turn. So he does have more health back. But no, you should have gone for the damage. Should have gone for the damage. So here comes the U-turn. You do get a Scald off on something, and in comes Kiram again. Because now it's an easy... It now becomes a guessing game for Jesse, whether or not to stay in and uh, take the Freeze Dry, which would still be super effective. In fact, Kiram only has to click Freeze Dry at this point. There is no guessing game. Freeze Dry comes off it, hits the uh, the Toxapex as well as the Landris, but he chooses to actually go for, interesting, the Starmie play. Yeah, Starmie gets recover, gets access to Psychic. It just, wow, three Scalds and no burns. That it is just not Jesse's day. It really isn't. This man's gotten def special defensive drops, crits, freezes. Like, is there any more, like, bag of tricks of... R and Jesus that we are no. have yet to see. But like let's also look at Antony's team. Like just the Steelix was a phenomenal Mon to bring to counter the Clefable. Oh, you kidding me? Wow. The re okay. the reverse burn and the is that a ghost reducing berry? Yeah, that should be what Kasib, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Kasib berry? Yeah, Kasib berry. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, it's just the hacks really are more on Antony's team, but I'm not going to deny the fact that Antony has brought a counter for every single one of his mods. He really We've has. We've seen their, their, the regen um, taunt is a phenomenal bring on Tornadus. Look at that damage. Special wall just eating it up. He is going to get one layer up, but once again, the toxicity being in the back is just... Don't know if it's the right call. Yeah, Getting I don't... rid of the Starmie would have been much bigger right now. This is going to be a big risk for Jesse now. If he's swapping into the Aegislash, if, if that burn comes off, that is going to be GG's. It should be a Psychic, though. Or a Rapid Spin. Oh, Rapid Spin block. That's what he's trying to do here. Huge, an amazing read here. That's really nice I on Jesse's wants... part. It, if he gets burned, it's over. That's the problem here. Come on, get if that. If he gets burned... It's over. But Swords Dance is necessary. That is the only way Jesse can bring this back. This is shit. But he would need two of them because his um, Iron Head and Sacred Sword are resisted by Troxtricity. So here comes the Scalds. 
Huge damage. Oh! Yeah, this just... It wasn't meant for Jesse, honestly. Because oh. Jesse went for three Scalds and got zero burns. And Anthony went for two Scalds and got two burns. Like, it's just... Have we seen any RNG come off from Jesse's end? Unfortunately, we haven't. Uh, there hasn't been one good roll in his favor. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely think that RNG, while didn't play a... Did not play all the all the factor here. Uh, it definitely played a good factor in throwing Jesse off his game. I mean, f for one, for one, we can all agree that freeze just really just changes the entire dynamic of how you play a game because you can't move. You have to either force a swap out or stay in and just lose a mod altogether. And the potential percentage of freezing turn one is it just exponentially like just lowers your chances of having anything good come out of a freeze it's one of the worst hacks outside of like infatuation in my opinion i agree i agree uh there's been moments even in one of my games against arthur where it just i could have won and two freezes really just messed up my whole game I do remember that battle, but it unfortunately looks like the, that kind of trend continues of uh, RN Jesus coming in. But once, but you know what? At the end of the day, you cannot sleep on the fact, like what we were talking about earlier, of how Anthony really played super safe. He honestly did not use a lot of his mods. We never saw the Toxtricity. We are barely now seeing this Urshifu. Meanwhile, Jer uh, Jesse swapped back and forth between a lot of his mods very, very quickly throughout the entire game, allowing them to take more and more damage. And I feel like there, he would definitely played more defensively when a more offensive presence should have been taking place here. That definitely gave Antony's playstyle a lot, uh, a lot better reads at times. Yeah, it goes back to, and we see the ball go just to kind of secure the win here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go, going back to what I was saying in the beginning, this is a game about longevity. When it comes to finals, especially, it's like. And your mods survive. And unfortunately, his mods got hacked. <laughs> but still, um, yeah, no. Um, dude, just scouting with the protect and having leftovers, lefties on a very defensive mod like Steelix is a great call. Um, the oh, Tom Grenadus. that's just insult to injury. It, well, it's Wicked Blow. Wicked Blow always screams. Oh, does it? Okay. I, yes. I, I forgot yeah, about... Yeah. I thought that was the water one. <sighs> no, no. They both crit. Those, those moves are signatures to always crit. Okay. I thought it was only one of them that always crit, but... Um, yeah. I mean, he still has Landris. I don't know what good it will do. But, I, uh, but yeah. It's definitely... If Jesse is able to make anything come out of here, it's going to be an absolute miracle. He's going to need crit upon crit upon crit, uh, which would be nice, but... It's just really not going to be doing any damage there. That bulk up, like you said, sealed the deal there. A Wicked Blow is going to come off. Critical hit. It's gone. This Tox Effects isn't living. It can't gain back any more health. And you're just wasting more health with the Stealth Rocks. But that is a furious animation. Yeah. It would have been nice to see uh, what would happen if Jesse had clicked Sacred Sword on his bulk up. Uh, it was burned though, but still would have been nice to see how much damage that potentially could have done for him to go into Lando and just click Earthquake rather than U-turn. Mm -hmm. But got to give it to Antony, man. Antony brought the mons he needed to get the win here, though. Wish I could have seen less hacks to see how this game would have played. I probably, I believe it would have finished 1-0. I think we would have had a really, really good match. No, absolutely. Rather than a more one-sided match. No, absolutely. Uh, I, I can only agree with you because, I mean, there's only so much we can, you know, hypothesize in regards to crits, in regards to uh, hacks coming in and out of these battles. But end of the day, it is the game we play. Um, could it have gone differently? Absolutely. But unfortunately, it looks like RNG kind of takes the big W. But that, like I said, you can't sleep on Antony's preparation and those mons that he brought. Um, definitely unforeseen mons. Like the, like we said, we didn't even see the Toxtricity. Uh, Steelix putting nothing but the best work. And it looks like Jesse's probably raging right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pause <laughs> the video. I can... Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, just recapping... 
unfortunately, what did we see? We saw a death draw from the earthquake. We saw the freeze from the freeze dryer. Uh, the two skull burns, the crit from the, the Steelix. It's just a lot of things. Through, through the Barbarian. Didn't it go through the Barbarian as well? Uh, no. It didn't? Okay. For some the, reason, the earthquake was, oh, through the Intimidate. Through the Intimidate. That's what it was. That's what it was. But yeah, it was just. I'm, I'm going to give it to Antony. First of all, congratulations to Antony. First LEO victory. Yeah, for sure. That was phenomenal. Bringing the the toxicity, toxicity would have ate the 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 the, tox, the the toxic spikes, so that would have been no issue for um him there. He had the rapid spin, the taunt on the the thing. I, I love the protect Steelix. Protect Steelix was just phenomenal. The man and really the rocks were so crucial to limiting Jesse's switches, as well as just like dealing with the hazards and the kind of bulk stalling that the that kind of game that jesse played all season i mean i'm uh from remembering from your battle even that that was definitely the kind of play style that he had he had that bulky stally team that you know it works end of the day but if you become kind of a one-trick pony and that's kind of your go-to even if you kind of switch things up every uh, every other week it's, I mean, it's kind of like my, my uh, Snorlax strats. Everyone eventually saw it coming, and everyone brought something to handle Snorlax. And so here in this case, with the hazards, Antony brought what he needed to stop the hazards, to stop the stall. And so kudos, nothing but kudos to Antony. Jesse, that does not mean that you did not play bad. I do feel like some of your plays were rushed. But you played a phenomenal game. You did not give up. I could see the drive in you and your thinking patterns throughout the match. And you were so close, my guy. But RN Jesus just did not answer your prayers today. And hey, man, it, it's still playing. I've been there. Um, <laughs> even, like, going back to that Arthur video, when I got frozen, I just got off my chair and I started walking around the room. That's what happens when you get tilted. Exactly. Um, while, Anthony, while Anthony was getting the hacks and he probably felt sorry, Jesse is getting out of his chair. He's slamming things. Like, your head is not in the game, <laughs> it, unfortunately. It really isn't. And when Jesse tilts, he tilts very far. This ain't a 45-degree angle. This is like 98.5. Yeah. Like, when I get tilted, after a few minutes, I'm like, okay, let me try to do this no. and that. Jesse is... Jesse. <laughs> He's the, the Timanian devil. He really is. <laughs> but no. Everywhere. But no, like you said, uh, being it sucks uh, on both ends because, you know, both, like, of course there can only be one winner. Both, both captains, both teams bought really well, uh, played really, really, really well. But I've been there on that. I've been on Antony's side for a championship winning season, not as far as finals, but I think it was, I honestly think it was against Antony, if I'm recalling now, um, for my second uh, winning season. What was it, season eight or nine or something like that? Season seven, I can't remember, but... Uh, season seven. Season seven, but there was huge hacks uh, in, in my play, and I still have this video on my channel to where it's like, I feel so bad for taking this win. But at the same time, th this is Pokemon. This is why Pokemon exists and uh, uh, and creates that extra layer of, well, damn. <laughs> End of the day. I mean, there's no other yeah. way I can really explain it except, damn. But no. I agree. But what did you think of the season all in all? Was it a good season, Squid? Was was there you know highlights and lowlights for everyone, or was uh, as Sword and Shield kind of uh, you know played its course? You know, Sword and Shield, it, it's fine. Um, we just need Gen Nine, honestly. We need sixty minute timer back. We need. Um, <laughs> did I have fun? I can say. I can say I had fun. Yeah, I had fun. It, I probably had more fun in my other leagues, though, because I had more new stuff. But it wasn't a bad season. I think we made the best out of it, Sword and Shield. And hopefully Gen 9 brings something new, because I think that's what the Pokemon community needs right now. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I won't keep you too much longer because I know it's definitely later on your side, but this is definitely what I, what I was looking for and reaching for was there needs to be a shakeup as far as competitive. I feel like competitive has gone like more and more downhill, like you said, with the timer, with the kind of the, the, the mechanics and just the gimmicks literally being the same for the past few years. And so hopefully, like you said, something shakes, something breaks, and you know gen 9 awaits us so i don't know if there's any plans on an off season as well but i want to thank you for joining me squid uh or for me joining you whoever however this is going but this was fun it was it was well players and trainers like i always say you guys are amazing stay blazing without later guys <laughs>